good morning, or depending on when you're listening to this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice of radio, so today we're going to be looking at a new Alola Nine Tales. Now, I say new Alola Nine Tales. It's not really a new Alola Nine Tales. It is, in fact, a reprint of the previous water type one with the awesome ability. It just so happens to now be a fairy type. Now, before we get deep into the Alola Nine Tales, and obviously here I'm absolutely going to, I should mention this was shown to me and translated by the lovely Primal Lugia over on Twitter. Before we get fully into it, we need to mention that alternate type reprints seemed to be a thing. They seem to be this big thing that was going to be happening in Ultra Prism. So we saw Tapu Lele, for argument's sake, where we got the fairy type after having, well, we should have had the psychic type, and eventually we did. We saw that Empoleon got a metal type after having previously had the water type. These alternate types came around in kind of Ultra Prism and Forbidden Light, and then they went away. As far as I'm aware, and please do correct me if it turns out I'm wrong about this, Celestial Storm didn't have any alternate type reprints. Lost Thunder is not getting any alternate type reprints. We had a few, and then over in Japan they got bored of redoing them, and then we didn't get any. Well, it seems like in GX Ultra Shiny, they are back. Now, to be fair, GX Ultra Shiny is largely a reprint set, so it does make sense that we would have some alternate type reprints in a set, which is ostensibly a reprint set. But it still strikes me as very odd that we've had this big break, and now we're back with them. So, this Alola Ninetales, I mean, it's good. It's really, really good. One of the great things is, even though it's turned into a fairy type, it still evolves some Alolan Vulpix. So you've still got the amazing Alolan Vulpix with Beacon, and you can still use Brooklyn Hill to search that bad boy out. So you've got all the benefits of it evolving from a water type, while it's still being a fairy type, which I like very, very much indeed. It's got 110 HP, which should be bad because of Zoroark GX, but ju just wait till we get to the ability. And you combine that with a weakness to Metal, which should be bad because Duskmane Necrozma can get a one-hit KO. But actually, as we're going to see when we get to the ability, it's kind of a moot point. Although non-GXs like Boswell, if you've got four prizes remaining, and Delmise will get one hit KOs, which is, for this Pokemon, way more relevant. The Retreat Cost of One is fine, it's quite low, and if you wish, you can use a Skateboard, although, contrary to my prediction, that is not seeing a lot of play at, at all at the moment. And it's a Fairy type, so you are hitting weakness against something like Rayquaza, and a whole bunch of other Dragony types. Although, while we're here... How does this not have a resistance to darkness? All fairy Pokemon have a resistance to darkness. The other fairy type Alola Ninetales has a resistance to darkness. How does this not have a resistance to darkness? Sorry, but that's weird. Alrighty then. But really here it is the ability. And like I've said, it is exactly the same ability as we saw on the old Alola Ninetales. It is immune to attacks from EX and GX Pokemon. It cannot be damaged by attacks from Pokemon EX or GX Pokemon. Now, other effects other than damage do go through, but these effects don't. Here's what's super, super awesome, though. There's been a huge change since... The last one came out in Burning Shadows, and this one came out, and the change is Garboda got rotated. So now, this can't be turned off. If you get this onto the field, your opponent cannot get rid of this ability. Now, to be fair, a slacking in the active will turn it off, but then again, slacking isn't an EX or a GX Pokemon. So, technically speaking, once Slacking gets in the active, you're no longer immune to EX and GX Pokemon. 
but the only Pokemon that can attack you is a non-EX, non-GX, so that's kind of a moot point anyway. And the lovely Primal Lugia has been kind enough to let us know that it's even called Luminous Barrier, and the attack is even called Aurora Beam. This is phenomenal. I talked about the state of the format in a recent video. I'll pop a link to that one in the description. And one of the points I made about the format as it is at the moment, without any ability lock, we're in a format where you can really take advantage of abilities. You can really use abilities in a phenomenal way, and that's why stuff like Malamar and Vikavolt are getting better and better and better as time goes by. Because... You don't need to worry about them being turned off. Ability lock is essentially a thing of the past. And that leads in here as well. Now I suppose you could raise a point here and I wouldn't be terribly mad at you if you did. Well hang on a second Wossy. Surely the fact that Garboda got rotated out in September and the Water Alolan Ninetales was legal when it got rotated out means that Surely if it was going to be great, it would be great. And the answer is, I think this card is underplayed. I think this card should be played a lot more than it is. I think this is a really good card, and I think the format at the moment is opening up that this should be a very good, widely played card. But the other thing is, this Alola Ninetales, the water one, is great in water decks. So if you're playing Aqua Patch pretty cool. If you're playing Quagsire, pretty cool. If you're playing Water Energy, pretty cool. But now, the new Alolan Ninetales is great in Fairy decks. So, if you're playing a Gardevoir deck, oh wow, great, now we're good. If you're in Expanded, because it has rotated out now, and you're playing Xerneas, oh well great, now we're accelerating energy and life is good. That is where it comes in, ladies and gentlemen. That is why it's such a good, useful card, because now you've got it for water decks, and you've got it for fairy decks. And the format at the moment is still a very GX-heavy format. Yeah, there's decks around with Baby Buzz, Hainik, and the Garboda, which hasn't been rotated. The one that punishes you for playing all of your item cards... But the format as a whole is still very heavy on Boswell. Rayquaza seeing a whole bunch of play. Zoroark is still one of the best decks in the format. Necrozma GX is still seeing a lot of play. Although to be fair, Necrozma GX is seeing play in decks that are playing Malamar, so they're playing non-GXs, so they will have a counter. So maybe your opponent is going to have a counter here. And to be fair, Rayquaza decks are generally played with Vikavolt, so they're playing Delmise to basically counter anything like this that comes along. So maybe we're in a format at the moment where actually there's so many counters being played that it's kind of a moot point. So what I would tell you is this. Either it's a great card, or... It's a great card for a different format because this isn't necessarily the best format at the moment in terms of everyone's playing a non-EX, non-GX. But you know what? Sooner or later, people are going to stop playing these counters. And if we get to a format where that's the case, this becomes a phenomenal ability. Even if it's not great now, it's something to bear in mind. Now, as for the attack, we don't need a translation for this. It's clearly Psychic Double Colorless 80 damage. It's fine. Worth mentioning that 160 is what you'll do normally if you're hitting for weakness, which won't get a Rayquaza, but Choice Band is a thing. So if you're hitting for weakness on a non-GX, 160 should be enough. Even, you know, Big Stage 2 boy like Dragonite is going to go down pretty quickly to that because you'll be doing 160. And against a GX like Rayquaza, as long as you add a choice ban here, you'll be good. Although I should mention that, and I'm sorry, but Dragonite is just the best example here. Dragonite GX 
actually has 250 in a weakness, you'll be hitting 220 with choice band and with weakness, so you won't be getting a KO there. This is not an attacking Pokemon. This is a Pokemon you play to block your opponent from playing EXs and GXs. And maybe there's too many decks around at the moment that are playing counters. That is something I will concede might be an issue. But it doesn't have to be great now. It can be great in the future, and this is absolutely a card to bear in mind in any fairy deck you play from now until this rotates out, which will, of course, be quite a while. So I'm giving it between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. But if we ever get a format where people stop playing these non-EX, non-GXs, and you end up in a very GX-heavy format, Oh my goodness, this becomes nuts, especially given that we don't have ability lock. So there we go. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about this. So do please let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but please do remember the rule. Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all of that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that but by far the most important thing as always other than checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays for some transformers action is to look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name is ross and you've been watching ptcg radio